Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 4 of our Geometry Dash game which we're making on Scratch 3. Now in case you've not watched part 1 to 3, I will leave a card for you right here. So in parts 1 to 3, what we did was basically uh, ensure that our background, the floors, the platforms, the visible obstacles and the invisible obstacles were all scrolling. Now in this video, what we'll be doing is we'll be making sure that the um, coins, this, uh, the trampoline and also the flying changer all appear in our course so that in the next video, we can start coding the player. So I'm going to bring these things up first before um, we proceed because it's going to be a little bit inconvenient for me to move down every single time. So I'm going to start off with the trampoline and as usual, we'll begin with a when I receive in it. So I'm going to zoom in so that you can see the code better. And basically, as usual, we'll be deleting all the clones since we'll have, you know, multiple clones. And hence, whenever we start the game or restart the game, whichever way you want to think about it, we want to delete every single clone that exists. So after we're done deleting uh, the clone, what I will do is I will hide the sprite and I will set the clone variable to yes. I haven't created that yet, which I will do right now. So call it clone um, for the sprite only and then click OK. So basically we'll be creating multiple clones with multiple X and Y values. So create um, uh, two different variables for the sprite only. The first one is X and the second one is Y. And uh, if you actually go to the costumes right now, you'd see that we have multiple costumes for our jump. And the reason we do is because we want to have this little animation where the trampoline constantly keeps, you know, uh, flipping through these costumes. And it looks kind of good uh, at the end of the game. And um, we'll be, uh, I'll be teaching you guys how you can add this. First, let's get them on our course. So add in a hide. And after this, let's set the clone variable to yes, because right now we'll be creating the clones. Um, let me first switch the costume to jump, uh, jump one. I believe that's the first costume. And after this, let us set our X and Y values for the first clone. Now it's very important you get these things right. I mean, it's not so important if you're off by, you know, a few digits. Um, but when you start to um, move by, you know, if you change X by 100 or 200, then you'd really start to get the game wrong and it may even become impossible to complete the level. So I'd recommend just sticking around with these X and Y coordinates for this particular course. So the first one is going to be 1765 and Y is going to be 5. So that's going to be number one. And then let's create a clone because if we don't do that, there is no point of having two different X and Y values. So I'm going to duplicate this entire thing next. And this time I'm going to have two, four, four, zero. And Y is going to be in this time negative 76. So it's a little different location. Um, next, what I will do is I will duplicate this once again. And uh, this time what I will do is I will set this to be 1860 and the Y coordinate is going to be again negative 76. Um, the next one is going to be uh, once again negative um, 76 for the Y coordinate. Uh, but I will change this uh, top one to be 1980. So these three, um, that'd be these three trampolines which are, you know, horizontal in a single row. You'd see that in the course. So let me continue without further ado. So now let me duplicate this once more because we do have quite a bit of trampolines. So the next one is going to be 2100 and it's going to be once again negative 76. And uh, the last one is going to be 6050. It's going to be, you know, way further off in our course. And the Y coordinate is going to be negative 176. Now, negative 176 is basically, you know, the ground level. So that's where that number comes from. Um, but we'd have those three trampolines, like I mentioned, very, very close to each other. Now, before I forget, I also need to set this clone variable to no. And believe me, this is very, very important. And if you mess this up, then the trampoline's uh, animation is just not going to work. All right, so we have set clone to no right now. And uh, instead of, you know, having the whole go to coordinates, um, go to coordinates function coded again, what I'm going to do is just head over to the invisible um, obstacles and just I'm going to throw it into the trampoline. So we have this right here and we can just reuse it. It's basically going to be the same for um, both the special obstacles and uh, for the special coins as well as the flying changer. So, you know, it just makes sense reusing it each and every time. So basically uh, what we'll be needing uh, right now is the second message. So when we receive and I will change this to a tick. 
So when we receive tick, it's important we have an if else here because the clones are gonna be the ones which are showing on our obstacle course, but the sprite, which is not a clone, which is creating all the clones here, um, that one is going to be regulating this variable, which I will call trampoline countdown. I'm gonna create it right now and I'm gonna do it for um, all sprites because I don't want each clone to have a different variable. So let me call this trampoline countdown. Or you can actually have it for the sprite only and only one sprite would be changing it, but you know what, it just, it's just easier to do it like this. So each and every time here, what we'll do is uh, within the else, we'll be changing trampoline countdown by one. That is it, we'll have nothing else within this. And um, within you know the if statement, we'll be having as usual, if the clone variable is equal to yes. Uh, we did this in the previous videos and I'm not gonna explain this again. So if the clone is equal to yes, then we can just use the um, go to coordinates function and we'll be having a similar thing. So we'd have go to x, um, x uh, minus scroll x, and as far as the y is concerned, we'll just be throwing in the y coordinate just like that. Um, and also we'll be adding one more if uh, statement, and this is to make sure that we have an animation. So I'll be saying if, and then you can grab an equal to from operators, and we'll be checking if mod of, okay? And you can grab mod from operators, and mod stands for modulus, which basically gives us the remainder of something. So if it was seven mod 15, um, it would just be seven, okay? So uh, let's continue. So in this case, what we'll be uh, doing is we'll be using the trampoline countdown variable and we'll be doing mod of six. So the answer cannot exceed six. Uh, it's got to be, you know, something uh, like one, two, three or four, but only when this is equal to zero. So it has to be exactly divisible by six and this is gonna happen every six ticks, okay? That's the whole point. And if this is the case, then what we'll do is we will switch costume to be whatever the next costume is. So we'll just be, you know, going through in this nice looping motion um, within our costumes. And that's pretty much it. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna hit the green flag now and hopefully you'll be able to see the trampolines eventually. I know the player is in a bit of a wrong spot, so maybe I'll move him here. Um, uh, you should see the trampolines here. So there you go, you have multiple trampolines and you'd see them uh, much later on in the course as well. What's important is the fact that the trampolines are working and as a result, we can continue with the special coins. Um, it's gonna be very simple. Once again, I'm gonna drag and drop this go to coordinates function because we'll just be reusing this multiple times. I'm gonna do it into the flying changes as well. Um, and now let's continue. Okay, so let's go to the special coins here. And uh, what we'll be doing is uh, once again, something similar. So we'll start off with the when I receive init. So head over to events and grab a when I receive init. In this case, first of all, we will be making sure we hide the sprite. And uh, it's actually important to mention that the coin would have a neat little animation of its own. Uh, when the player, you know, touches it, we'll be moving up and fading away slowly. Um, but I'm not going to do that in this video. That'll probably be after we have the collisions and all of that, you know, fancy other stuff. Uh, and in this video, I'll just be having them set up in the course, okay? So when we receive in it, first of all, let me go ahead and hide the sprite itself. And after this, let me set up the clone variable. As usual, let's call this clone. And I will set it for the sprite only. So let me set clone. Uh, to yes, because at this point we'll be creating clones. And after this, let me set up some X and Y coordinates. So I will make a variable called X and I will make a variable called Y. There we go, let's hide those two. And let us set, oops, I already had that there. So let us set X and Y. The first clone is gonna have an X of 1915. And once again, you know, uh, just copy these coordinates down. Uh, and the Y would be negative 60, not negative, negative, it would be negative 60. Um, here, let's create a clone of ourself uh, and let us duplicate this entire thing so that we can save, uh, save some time. So the second one is gonna uh, have uh, an X coordinate of 2040 and the Y coordinate is going to be once again, negative 60. And uh, the last one is going to have an X coordinate of 3,415 and the Y coordinate in this case, it's going to be negative 110. So it's much below basically. And that's it. So we'll uh, lastly set the clone variable to no. Let's not forget to do this um, because this is very, very important. So set clone to no. And uh, the tick message is gonna be very simple. So when we do receive tick, uh, what we'll do is we will have the go to coordinates function, but we'll just be having um, this within, uh, we'll be having this within a 
and if clone is yes. So there's no else statement here at all. So if the clone variable is set to yes, then what I will do is I will go to coordinates, grab a minus as usual and put in x minus scroll x and uh, in the y value just put in the y variable and that's it. So now let me hit the green flag and uh, the special coin should eventually show up along with the trampolines here. So let me wait for a second while this goes and there you go. That's the first coin, that's the second coin and you'll start to see one more later on. Um, what I'm going to do to save some time is throw in most of the code because this is very similar. So I'll be throwing in the tick code and I'll, uh, I'll also be throwing in the init code just so that, you know, it's simpler. Um, that didn't go ahead. So let me retry that. I think this went through. There we go. So let me move all of this to the side because this is just one gigantic mess right now. Uh, and let's continue with the init. So there are obviously multiple changes we need to make. Um, uh, we do have the clones created here, so uh, it's fine as of now. So uh, let's create the first clone. So uh, I don't need three clones, I just need uh, two. Okay, so then let's create clone, set clone to no. All right, so the first clone is going to have an X of um, 4930. The second, uh, the Y is going to be negative 12. The second clone is going to have an X of 2760, uh, 2760, there we go. And the Y is going to be 40 in this case, okay? So two very different coordinates, but you know, it's pretty much the same thing. And uh, that's it. I mean, we don't really even have to do anything else to see some valid output. Uh, we can just hit the green flag. Um, I also didn't check, I, uh, I also don't think I checked if the trampolines were showing the animations. I'm assuming they did. Um, yeah, they are showing the animations and um, I will end this video once I do see, you know, the flying thing. So we have the first one here when the flying course starts, you can see the coin down there as well. And the second one is going to show up when we go through this entire flying course, which is right here. So that's it I'll be doing in this video. It was fairly productive. In the next video, we'll be uh, making sure that the player can move and we have his jumping set up. And after that, we'll probably get into the, you know, flying motion, the um, the player effects and so on. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.